Good morning, everybody. 11.33 a.m. Eastern Time on Sunday, July 31st, 2022. Chad Xavier Harris here, recording live from Duluth, GA. Chad Xavier Films, Chad Xavier Trades. Black guy dipping, black guy pippin. Pippin, pip, pip, P-I-P, P-I-N-G, P-I-P, P-I-N-G, right? Mr. P-I-P, P-I-N-G, right? Pit ping, ping pong pit, pit ping pong. You're playing ping pong with the pips. Ping pong, the pips. Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. Bruce Lee, ping pong, nigga. Spin around, round kick that motherfucker, nigga, right? So, right? You know what I'm saying? Oh shit. Oh shit, oh shit, I need a selfie stick, it's crazy, I love this angle, I need a selfie stick, I need to get that, real talk, so today is Sunday, my most like deciding day of the week because the market opens up, so it's the end of your 36 hour weekend, as a currency trader, you only have a 36 hour weekend, the markets close half of Friday and half of Sunday, so Friday and Sunday are both half days, so together they equal one full day, so in total, you'd be trading for like six days from like Sunday to Friday, but it's half a Sunday and half a Friday. So Sunday and Friday make five days. So you have Sunday and Friday, one day, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So four days, Monday through Thursday, and then Friday and Sunday are one day because they are both half days. Friday it closes at 5 p.m. and it opens at 5 p.m. on Sunday. So 36 hours. I, I just woke up a few hours ago, went to the store, got black and mild or whatever. Um, I was hitting my oil and then it was like leaking, so I had to clean it. And so I like dipped the black and mild in the oil and smoked it. And, like almost a slight headache, a little bit, duh, right? But uh, that was cool just to see what, what's up, you know. Dip it. Lace the black and mild in oil, <laughs> right? So fucking crazy. And uh, I'm just trying to get in the groove, man. I was still waking up a little bit. Woke up at like 10 o'clock. So. Uh, just trying to get back in the groove, bro. Uh, give me a second, you know what I'm saying? Just waking up. I'm not gonna lie, like, when I got up and I started walking to the store, I was just like, feeling like slight depression. Just slight, like, it was, it's still there. You know, it's never gonna leave. And so it was still there. It was just slight, and I was just, you know, I teared up a little bit. And then I want to push it too far on the, you know, I was like, let me embrace it. And I embrace it, tear a little bit, and then it was like, all right, let's try to face it and replace it. You embrace it, and you face it. You know, you face it, you embrace it, and then you replace it. So. The emotion comes, you face the emotion. That's what it is. Look at the emotion dead in the eye. This is how I feel. It sucks. All right, boom. Embrace it. Embrace it. Give it a hug. Give it a hug. This is your emotion. Like, we can't run from this emotion. Like, we can't run from this emotion, bro. The emotion of, um, you know, of you. Your emotion. Like, you can't run from your emotion, bro. So, like, when, when you feel it, you have to feel it and embrace it, give it a hug. Like, what if the emotion wasn't trying to hurt you? What if the emotion, what if the pain itself was in pain? Like, it's pain, right? So what if it's you in pain? Like, your emotion is your pain. So face your pain, embrace the pain, give it a hug. Like. We're running from this 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 uh, depressed emotion that's following us. Like, just turn around and give it a hug, and just say that it'll be okay, you know. But you have to take charge. You have to be in control of what's going on, not the pain body. The pain body has to stay behind you. You can't lead the way. Don't let your pain body get in front of you and lead the way. You know, the pain body's chasing you. Stop. Turn around. Face it. You know what I'm saying? Embrace it, give it a hug, you know, embrace the feeling, just embrace it, just like, 
this is how I feel right now. And and then from there, you decide, do I want to feel this way? And it's like, obviously you don't. So now you have to work on replacing it. And that's what I, I, I go through all day. Just all day. And, uh, uh, you have to just, like, play the mind games with yourself, man, and, like, realize that it's just in your mind. And that's why it sucks so bad, because it's in your mind. It's in your mind, uh, and you have to just realize that that's the only place it is, but... Your mind is such a vital part, that's your computer. <laughs> it's a virus in your fucking computer. So when the shit starts tweaking out, just realize my shit got a virus. You know what I'm saying? And you just deal with it. Like, you know what it is. It's tweaking right now because there's a virus in there. Then there's like, you know, we need malware software for the human brain. And one day we're going to have that with, like, transhumanism. We're going to have that. You're going to see that. And I get to be a futurist in that regard. I predicted that shit. We're going to have fucking malware software for the brain. We're going to have antivirus, anti-depression software for the brain one day. And as someone who suffers from that, I would love an invention like that. But... You know, I feel like, you know, technology inserted inside the brain, inside the human body, period. Besides, you know, a heart pacemaker kind of thing, anything like that, that's, you know, you needed that to survive. But anything else, you didn't need that to survive. So, I feel like putting technology inside the body is, like, the mark of the beast or whatnot and, like, genetic tampering is the market of beast because you're literally putting the genetics of a beast in your genetics so stuff like that is real sticky and I, I don't know how to uh, address the sticky part I just have to admit that there's a lot of stickiness involved with transhumanism so there's a lot of stickiness involved with it um, the entire concept of transhumanism in itself is sticky so everything about it is very sticky. All the different inventions that are going to come out within the next 50 years, you're going to see that shit. We're going to see that shit. Like, I was born in 89, so the average lifespan would be like 65 or 60s and stuff. So that would put me in, like, the very end of transhumanism, you know, 2066, you know. And um, personally, do I, what do I do? You know, do I think I'll be alive at the end of transhumanism? I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, my intuition is, like, telling me, like, you won't live past 40 just because, like, at 38 I'm running for president. And, you know, during that time um, of running, if, you know... I survived long enough to actually win it. You know, so it's like in between me running and then actually winning in that first term, I envisioned that being the end of my life. Like once, once I took on my destiny of politics, it's a wrap for me. You know, like once I embrace my political destiny all the way and go politics, yeah, they're going to get rid of me at that point. I feel like they'll tolerate all the other shit until I jump into politics. So, because everything I always did was always political anyway. So, it was like, oh shit, this nigga is, you know, on some bullshit. And then it's like, well, as long as he don't come over here with that bullshit, you know what I'm saying? But he's over there with that bullshit starting some shit. And, you know, so, like, they're going to have to decide, like, do they want to, like, you know, try to stop me from there. And then it's like, oh, uh, let them have fun on camera. And then, like, all of that camera work, bro, is Chad Films when I run for politics. And I have all these cameras in my face and shit. Like, all these reporters and all this, you know, entertainment, artists, actors, shit. I get to 
you know, throw that in front of the camera. And I'm going to have all these, like, news cameras in front of me and journalists and serious questions. And I'm just, like, going to be showing my wit and saying all this witty, humorous uh, shit because it's true. I'm going to be saying a lot of true stuff. And it's going to be humorous because the truth is always funny. So they're going to, you know, be laughing. And what do you think about this? And I'm going to say some shit. And they're going to be like, yo, this is the nigga I want in the office. What do you think about this? And I was like, yo. And they're going to be like, yo, this is the nigga I want in the office. And they're going to be like, yo, what do you think about this? And I'm going to be like, yo. And they're going to be like, yo, he's bugging. You know what I'm saying? But I still, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, let's give it a shot. Uh, like, you know, so I'm... I don't know where my life is going to go, bro. I don't know which way it's really going to turn. I have these feelings inside, you know, but speaking of feelings inside, I, I want to start voicing my intimations and stuff. I want to start voicing my intimations, bro. Like, you know, um, an intimation, I don't know the exact definition, so I have to paraphrase it. My paraphrasing of the word um, uh, intimation is... Uh, it's an intimate feeling. It's an intimate feeling you feel from within. It's like your intuition. It's like a whisper from the spirit. It's like the spirit's whispering to you. You know what I'm saying? Right here, like that's my JFK scar. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you see the two scars right here. Two fucking keloids. That's my JFK scar, right there. My JFK scar. And then I have more right here. I have more JFK scars that look just like this one right here. And they came from two separate events spaced out like 10 years apart these popped up in 2013 the year jfk's declassified cia documents came out these just popped up and two years later when i figured it out i realized like that's why they just popped up in that year they're like these popped up when they declassified the shit like more scars just like my fucking body is like a diagram of the shooting of jfk like the scars i have that look like this they are placed everywhere he was shot crazy and they look the same they look the same they look the same bro they look the same you see it you see the jfk scars right there a whole bunch of them he was shot from the back so they're just showing me the scars where i could see him if they put them on my back i wouldn't have been able to see him real talk so they put them on the opposite side like he was shot five inches below the collar. Like, look at that. It's five. You see my collar? It's five inches below the collar. You see that? That's my collar, right? You see the collar? Boom. These scars. And there's so many of them. One of them is five inches below the collar, bro. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, I have scars on my body shaped like bullets. The exact same place as he was shot. Like, that is a common sign of reincarnation. They say that shit. Like, you'll know you were reincarnated if you have, like, the scars of the person like the way they died or some shit the last person died this way and you're born with the fucking scars that's how it goes nigga you know what i'm saying i wasn't born with these scars they fucking popped up this one popped up from a near-death experience these just popped up when the documents got released real shit they just came out of nowhere just nothing happened it just started appearing right there and they just stopped and that was it you know what I'm saying? Weird shit, bro. Weird shit, weird shit. And then, of course, I have a beauty mark on my neck and, like, right in the throat. And that's where he was shot in the throat. So I have I have marks everywhere he was shot. Like, he was shot, like, in the back of the head. You know, like, he was shot in the back and the front. Like, this nigga was lit the fuck up. They shot this nigga, like, five times in the head. Like, he was shot the fuck up, bro. That's why his brain was exploded. It was not one fucking bullet. It was a bunch of fucking bullets. Like, a bunch of bullets missed. But a couple did eventually hit when they stopped the fucking car. They stopped the fucking car. They stopped the fucking car. Like, you can see splatter coming out from, like, the back after the car stopped. Like, you know, from the other side. From the other side. Not even from this side. From the other side. But that's why his head was just, like, blown apart. Like, the nigga had took, like, you know, a bullet here, a bullet there, a bullet, you know, five inches below the collar. Nigga, that's one, nigga. That's two, nigga. You know what I'm saying? He caught a bullet here from the front, nigga, from Governor Connolly. Governor Connolly. Watch this Zapruder film. What's that black bar at the bottom? What's the black bar? And it's moving. How the fuck is a black bar moving? They're moving that. That was edited. They were moving the black bar to cover up something in Gover Governor Connolly's hand. What was it? A fucking gun. When you see the footage of them arriving at Love Field, 
right before they pull off in the fucking convertible, Governor Conley pulls something out of his fucking jacket while he's waving, trying to distract people. He's waving at him, and he's pulling something out of his jacket and sitting it on his lap. Next thing you know, they're on fucking Elm Street. Governor Conley is turning around in the chair. The chair was a swivel chair. It was a swivel chair. It was a perfect chair for a fucking shooter. That was a convertible chair. It was a fucking swivel chair. That chair was not installed in the vehicle. That's why he was able to do all this shit, nigga. So it looks like, oh, I got shot. No, nigga. You had a fucking swivel chair. You get in the car. Take the gun out. You put it on your lap. When it's time to fucking do the shit, the nigga's not dead. They kept looking back. He's not fucking dead. So the driver has to fucking stop. They had it fucking painted on the ground where to stop at. If this nigga's not dead, by the time you reach here, you fucking stop. Nigga kept looking back. He's not dead yet. Oh, fuck. He had to fucking stop. Boom. Now the fucking bullets can finally hit. These niggas couldn't hit a fucking moving target. Nigga had to fucking stop all the way. Then there's a nigga, there's two niggas in a storm drain right where you stopped at. That's where the shots came from. The nigga in the storm drain. You know what I'm saying? That grassy nose shit was just to throw you off. But there were niggas there. There were niggas everywhere. It was a triangulation. It was a military fucking attack. They're going to fucking put a shooter at every angle of a triangle. Nigga, there's going to be a shooter there, a shooter there, and a shooter there. Nigga, you're going down. You're in the middle of fucking triangulated gunfire. Nigga, like, straight military operation. It wasn't no one person shit. It was not no one person shit. It was not no one person shit. You know what I'm saying? You know. And it's just like, what kind of gun was Harvey Lee Oswald caught with, right? Man of Coke, the Carcano. Man liquor Carcano. Italian gun. Come on, now it's like a mob reference, nigga. It's like a mob reference. Either, either they're trying to blame it on the mob by doing that, or the mob was involved, and that was just their little joke. What's the type of gun that the nigga who killed the president had? An Italian rifle. Real shit, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like, you know, Italians were here, nigga. Like, you know, and then there was another gun found that same day before the Carcano, nigga. The first cop is like Craig David or some shit. His name was like some, Roger Craig or something Craig. They killed him. He was a cop, detective. He fucking went on camera and said, the first gun I found was the 757 Mauser. They killed the cop, bro, for saying that shit. Real shit, bro. That nigga died, bro. First gun he found was a 757 Mauser, bro. Or some shit like that. It was a something Mauser. 7.65 Mauser. Then, then you watch the news reports before, you know, when the news was actually reporting the real shit. The news kept saying different guns. They were like, they found a British 30-30 rifle. <laughs> like, come on, man. There's multiple motherfucking shooters, dog. You know what I'm saying? People pointing at other windows opposite, you know, sits forward, but the opposite side. That's where the fucking fire came from. This nigga was never in that room. He was in the lunchroom, and they were just setting him up, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, like, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, motherfucking Harvey Lee Oswald was a CIA agent, bitch. You know what I'm saying? That whole defector Russia was part of CIA shit. That's how you do it. And he was a double agent. And then he was a FBI informant at the same time. He was Hoover's top informant. They were even saying he was doing cancer research. This nigga was like into researching cancer, bro, in the 60s, dog. Like, he was just set up. He was an important person. They were trying to get out of the way, too, and they set him up, you know. But, like, um, like he was working with JFK, bro. Harvey Lee Oswald was responsible for helping shutting down the CIA boot camps that Kennedy wanted shut down. Kennedy said, I want these shit shut down. So they ended up sending Oswald to find the camps. They they had other CIA people 